good afternoon. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present to you our worship leader for today, someone who I've known all of my life, the queen of my heart, our lovely district consultant of the nurturing North Orlando district, Mrs. Beverly L. Postel. Good afternoon, everyone. Of course, you know, that's my daughter. <laughs> I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. O taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I will bless the Lord at all times, his praises shall continually be in my mouth. What a mighty God we serve. The Lord is good. And I just thank him for this day and for each and every one of you for your presence. Right now, we're going to have our, our hymn of praise by the choir and congregation. If you would stand for hymn number 272, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior.
Throne of Grace by Sister Maxine Rivers, followed by the Ministry of Music by the Monolith Women's Choir. Let us go to the throne of mercy. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Father, I thank you, God. For, Father, you allowed us another chance, another opportunity, God, to be in this house, God. For, Father, if it had not been for your grace and your mercy, Lord God, where would we be? Father, we thank you for this opportunity, God, that you gave us this afternoon, God. And, Father, we ask that you be in the midst, God. We thank you, God, for your grace and your mercy, God, your, your loving kindness, your goodness, God, your awesomeness, God. For you are great, God, and without you, there is none other. Father, we just thank you, God, for this afternoon worship service, God. We will come together, God, women. Lord God, just loving you so much, God. Royal women, God. And Father, we just thank you, God, that this opportunity that you gave us, God. Oh, God, we bless your holy name. We lift you up, God. We honor you, God. For there is none like you in all the earth, God. No, not one, God. And we just thank you, God. Father, we thank you, God, for allowing us one more chance, God. We thank you, God, for this service, God. We thank you for the pastor of this great church, God. Pastor Crutcher, God, and, and Reverend Juanita, God, as they take care of God, the things that they do, God, are great, excellent, marvelous, wonderful. They just don't get tired, God, serving for you, God. And we thank you, God, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God. We thank you, God, for everyone that's here this afternoon, God. We ask that you bless each and every family, God. Those that could not make it, God, we send a special prayer out to them, God. And Father, we ask, God, in the name of Jesus, one of our own, Brother Ty Johnson, Lord God, we ask that you lift him up right now in the name of Jesus, God. And we just ask that you bless his family, Lord God, and do what you do best, God, and that's heal. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we just thank you. We glorify you, God. We magnify your name. Hallelujah, God. And God, we just thank you, God, for this day. For truly, this is the day that you have made. And God, I will rejoice and be glad in it. God, we just thank you for what you are doing this afternoon, God. We ask that you be in the midst, God. And Father, we already know you are here. We just want you to stop with us, not for just a while, God. Just be with us, God, all day long. You was here at 745. You was here at 10 o'clock service, and you gave us two mighty words, God. And we just thank you, thank you in the mighty name of Jesus, God. We ask that you bless each family represented here today, God. Go with them, God, and lift them up, God. And we ask that you go with the sick and the shut in, God, those that even don't even know who you are. We ask that you be with this nation, God, for we are in trouble, God, but you got it all. You hold all power in your hand. And God, we just thank you, God, for a mighty word that's been getting ready to get bring forward. We thank you, God. We ask that you give it to her, God. We already know that she already ready for you, God. We just ask, God, that you just lay in her heart what thus said the Lord. Bring it, and we'll receive it. Oh, God, we just glorify your holy name. We just thank you, God, for it's in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Jesus' name. Glory, Jesus' name. Name like none other, Jesus' name, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen.
us to read from the book of Esther, chapter 4, verses 12 through 17. And I'll be reading from the New International Version. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, she sent back this answer. Do not think that because you are in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your fam father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to royal position for such a time as this. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days, night or day. I and my maids will fast also. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. The word of God for the people of God. Thank you. Praise the Lord, saints, if you would stand for the gospel. a reading from the New Testament. The book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 11 through 18. From Troas we put out to sea and sailed from Samothra, and the next day on to Nero. From there we traveled to Philippi, a Roman colony, and the leading city of that district of Macedonia. And we stayed there several days. On the Sabbath, we went outside the city gate to the river where we expected to find a place of prayer. We sat down and began to speak to the women who had gathered there. One of those listening was a woman named Lydia, a dealer in purple cloth from the city of Thyatira, who was a worshiper of God. The Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. When she and the members of her household were baptized, she invited us to her home. If you Consider me a believer in the Lord, she said. Come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. The word of the Lord. Christ our Savior said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, 
and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. having a liturgical dance by the spiritual movement of Mount Olive AME Church. Let's receive them as they come. you've never experienced it, just keep on living. I can talk about it tonight because I've experienced that feeling. I recall in September 71, I went into the hospital because I was becoming paralyzed. The doctor said I had two herniated discs in my spine that had to be removed. But I was afraid to go through with that operation because I was told if the doctors made one mistake, I'd never walk again. But after lying there flat on my back from September until March 72, I thought about how I'd been traveling up and down the dangerous highway telling men and women that God is able. And here I'm lying in the hospital afraid to go into that operating room. After I had a talk with myself, then I had a talk with Dr. Jesus. I told him I would go in there if he would go with me. Speak to the doctors and tell the doctors what to do. The 29th day of March, I went into that operating room with no fear. I had to learn to walk again. I had to learn to use my hands again. But the night of this has been gone. I can go anywhere I want to go. I can sit down to the piano and sing and play again. But so many nights while lying there in that hospital, my body was racked with pain. I was so sick, I couldn't pray. The only thing I could do was just look up toward heaven and utter these words. Touch. Touch me, Lord Jesus.
Give him another hand. Now just look at our seniors dancing unto the Lord. Now you don't have any excuse for not praising the Lord. So we just thank God for your wonderful job, ladies. Thank you so much. At this time, we'll have our litany by Sister Pinky Sanders, Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, followed by the welcome by Sister Desi, An Desi Anthony. Let us stand for the litany. Praise the Lord. They said, what? Touch me, Lord Jesus. Always, 24-7. <clears throat> Why have we come? What have we come to celebrate? shall we celebrate? Praise God for biblical royal women such as Esther and Lydia. now get ready to receive a word from the Lord. Christian women standing for God Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you.
welcome. I'm sure you felt welcome when you were getting, but even now you are more welcome. Let's give them a hand. Our guest soloist is the Twilight Thompson Hill, Flowers Temple Church of God, Winter Park, followed by the presentation of the speaker by Sister Myrtle Randall. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In times like these, we need a Savior. In times like these, we need an anchor. Be very sure. Be very sure. That your anchor holds and grips the side, the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He is the one. This rock is Jesus. The your anchor holds and grips the side, the solid rock. Jesus, 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 Jesus. What a wonder you are. Oh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. His name is. Oh, Jesus. What a There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know it's the spirit of the Lord. As we travel up the Cain's Highway of Life, we never know what good fortune awaits us. And today, it is my good fortune to have the opportunity to introduce the speaker of the hour. There is so much to tell you about our speaker, and I, and I just can't tell it all.
But I will tell you that she is an accomplished educator and community activist, a native of Houston, Florida, was raised in St. James AME Church. She is the daughter of Sister Beulah Douglas, and I will tell you that she earned a BA degree in psychology from Rollins College, a master's degree in education from Stetson University, and a doctorate degree from the University of Central Florida. She is a passionate advocate for academic access, education, and excellence of all levels. I will tell you that she accepted the call of God to preach under the pastorage of Bishop Samuel Green Sr. That same year, she began to pursue ministerial orders through the African Methodist Episcopal Church and was ordained as an itinerary deacon in 2007. She has served as the youth pastor and associate minister at the St. Mark EME Church in Orlando, Florida, under the pastorate of the Reverend Tara R. Gray. In 2009, God elevated her to the office of pastor of the Mount Olive AME Church in Privy, Florida. I will tell you that she currently serves as the pastor of her chapel AME Church and the historic Camel neighborhood in Orlando, Florida. I will tell you that she simultaneously attained remarkable achievements in the field of education. She taught exceptional student education, gifted education, and social science and public secondary education for eight years prior to transforming into higher education. She joined Valencia Community College, Orlando, Florida, in 1998. And she has served as a part-time faculty member, post-secondary Transition Specialist, Director for Dual Enrollment, Assistant Vice President for Workforce Education and Academic Affairs, Interim Provost for the West Campus. And I will tell you that she currently serves as the campus of Valencia College, West Campus President, and the newly approved downtown campus and is recognized for her distinction award. She was recently voted one of Orlando's most influential people in Orlando's magazine. And she is currently the recipient of an Aspen Presidential Fellowship for Community College Excellence. I will tell you that she continues to do her best to present herself to God as one of who, a, work, a workman who does not need to be ashamed 
and who correctly handles the word of truth. Second Timothy, second chapter, fifteen verse. To put it simply, she loves the Lord. She loves the word, and she loves service. She truly enjoys preaching and teaching the word. I will tell you that she enjoys spending time with her family, ministering in the community, and helping the needy. Among her many, many affiliations, she is a member of the Orlando Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority. I will also tell you that she is well married to retired Lieutenant Alfred E. Williams and is the mother of Cameron Williams. Please join me and put your hands together to welcome our speaker, our preacher for the hour, in Christ twice. Amen. At this time, we will ask that the Hearst Chapel Choir will come up and give us two selections prior to your pastor speaking. Hearst Chapel.
Search me, search me, Lord. 
Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone in this place. If you love the Lord, shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless the name of the Lord, our God, in this place. Amen. It's good to be in the Lord's house one more time. Whether it's your first, second, third, or fourth watch of the day, it's good to be in the Lord's house one more time. Will you just do me a favor, put your glad hands together and bless God. He has sustained you. Let me get all of my protocols out of the way. I do bring greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ who is the head of all things, including my life. And for the members and good officers from Hearst Chapel AME Church, amen, we bring you greetings from them, and I salute those who are here in the audience on this occasion, amen. I thank God for you. To the shepherd and angel of this house, the Reverend Dr. Mark Crutcher and his queenly wife and helpmate and preacher in her own right, amen, the Reverend Juanita Crutcher, amen, we praise God for them, praise God for the Reverend Eugenia Pollard Sanchez, amen, the head of the women's ministry and the one who reached out and extended this invitation, and to my district consultant, amen, and our worship leader on this occasion, in the embodiment of Sister Beverly Postel, amen. We praise God for her. That's good. Put your hands together for him, amen. And let me also just uh, thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to be a part of an ecumenical service, amen. Putting down our denominational affiliations because we recognize there's one Lord who is the Lord over all, for all, and in all. And we thank God for the opportunity to come together, to worship together on one accord. Amen. Amen. Will you go with me to the throne of grace? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we bless your holy and righteous name. We thank you, God, for this day. We thank you, God, for this worship occasion and experience that we are having. We pray now, God, that you and you alone will speak from on high. God, we have heard songs of praise. We have lifted up an invocation. We have read litanies. We have read scriptures. Yet, God, we still need to hear from you. Your word tells us that it is by the foolishness of preaching that men, women, boys, and girls are saved. Your word also tells us that it is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. So, God, we come now at this pointed hour asking you to say a word, oh God, that will speak to our lives. Say a word so that someone who is living in darkness might step into your marvelous light. Say a word so that someone who might be discouraged, oh God, will rise up and declare that the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Say a word in this place, O oh God, so that we will not leave this place the same way that we came. Now, God, I am your broken servant. God, I am weak, but I'm not weary. And I'm trusting, O oh God, that you have said your power is made perfect in our weakness. So, God, use me as you see fit, O oh God. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. You are my rock and my redeemer. In all things, God, hide me behind the cross so that when it's all said and done, your people will give your name and your name a glory. Hallelujah, God, we thank you. It's in the powerful name of Jesus we pray. And the people of God said, amen. Amen. If you will, go with me to the book of 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel. I thank God for your theme and for the scriptures that have been lifted up, and I pray that you will find this to be compatible. Amen. <laughs> Not the same, but compatible. Amen. <laughs> First Samuel chapter 1, I'm going to begin reading from verse 1. 
there was a certain man from Ramathea, a Zuphite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, son of Jeroham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tohu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. One was called Hannah, the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Year after year, this man went up from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord Almighty at Shiloh, where Hophni and Phinehas, the two sons of Eli, were priests of the Lord. Whenever the day came for Elkanah to sacrifice, he would give portions of the meat to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters, but to Hannah he gave a double portion because he loved her, and the Lord had closed her womb. Because the Lord had closed Hannah's womb, her rival kept provoking her in order to irritate her. This went on year after year. Whenever Hannah went up to the house of the Lord, her rival provoked her till she wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah would say to her, Hannah, why are you weeping? Why don't you eat? Why are you downhearted? Don't I mean more to you than ten sons? Once they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh, Hannah stood up. Now Eli the priest was sitting on his chair by the doorpost of the Lord's house. In her deep anguish, Hannah prayed to the Lord, weeping bitterly. And she made a vow saying, Lord Almighty, if you will only look on your servant's misery and remember me and not forget your servant but give her a son, then I will give him to the Lord for all the days of his life and no razor will ever be used on his head. As she kept on praying to the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying in her heart, and her lips were moving, but her voice was not heard. Eli thought she was drunk and said to her, How long are you going to stay drunk? Put away your wine. Not so, my lord, Hannah replied. I am a woman who is deeply troubled. I have not been drinking wine or beer. I was pouring out my soul to the Lord. Do not take your servant for a wicked woman. I have been praying here out of my great anguish and grief. Eli answered, go in peace. May the God of Israel grant you what you have asked of him. She said, may your servant find favor in your eyes. Then she went her way and ate something, and her face was no longer downcast. Early the next morning, they rose and worshiped before the Lord then went back to their home in Ramah. Elkanah made love to his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. So in the course of time, Hannah became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She named him Samuel, saying, because I asked the Lord for him. Pray with me, if you will, on this subject. From barrenness to brokenness, to blessing, a life of prayer, praise, and worship. You see, when we look at this particular passage of scripture, uh, we are recognizing that it is in this power of steadfastness to the things of God that we are equipped and able to overcome the circumstances of the earth. It is important for us to recognize as women and as believers that we are going to go through some difficult situations and circumstances just as a matter of course in this life. It was in the 16th century that a man named John Knox was used by the Lord to bring many people to faith in Jesus Christ in Scotland. If the story tells us that those days were hard days for the true church. Bloody Mary was persecuting true believers in the name of Roman Catholic Church. Many hundreds were being burned at the stake for their faith. 
In the midst of this horror, John Knox stood out as a beacon of faith, courage, and zeal for the Lord our Savior, Jesus Christ. At one point, as he prayed in a garden outside of a church in Edinburgh, the story says he was heard saying, Great God, give me Scotland or I will die. His burden was so great for his people and for his country that he would rather have died than to see them go to hell. He would rather have died than to see them continue in their perilous nature far, far from the Lord. The passage before us with Hannah, a woman who was barren, who was broken, and who so wanted to have a child, is one that is similar to the anguish that a John Knox was experiencing in his day. Hannah was not interested in souls per se, but she was certainly interested in having a baby. Her story has something to do with the church today. It speaks to us and it speaks to our need to be burdened for the community, to be burdened for those that are lost, to be burdened for those that are perishing in the midst of their ignorance. We as the women of God and as the people of God uh, must be burdened for those who don't know him and are going about in ignorance. Uh, we must have a heart's desire for them to be saved and for their lives to be transformed. Uh, we must be interested in the souls of mankind uh, that they must be saved. Uh, like Hannah, the Lord seems to have closed the womb sometimes, it seems, of the church. Uh, Sometimes it seems like the Lord has closed the womb of our productivity. So today I take this opportunity to talk to us as the women and the men of God to say, what can we do? What should we be doing? So that the Lord would open our wombs so that the church and so that his kingdom work would be able to go forth. Because the reality is, uh, when we talk about standing for God through prayer, praise, and purpose, uh, the reality is our purpose is that the men and women of this earth uh, might be saved. Uh, God gave all of us the great commission uh, to go forth into the highways and the byways uh, and to tell a dying world uh, that Jesus saved. He says it like this, go forth baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. If there's anything for which the church must take a stand, if there's anything for which women must take a stand, it is for the babies, the babies who don't know the Lord. It is for the community that continues to suffer. God has called us to be warriors, prayer warriors, uh, worship warriors and praise warriors uh, who will not get off the wall uh, until we see change uh, and transformation in our community. Uh, you see, when we look at Hannah, we recognize that Hannah had uh, no earthly children. Now, it was not Elkanah's doing uh, that she had no children uh, because the Bible tells us that Elkanah had two wives, uh, Hannah and Penina, and Penina had given birth to children. Uh, the Bible lets us know it was not her relationship with her husband uh, because the Bible says that he loved her. Uh, in fact, he loved her more than the one who had given him children. Uh, how do we know? Because the word tells us uh, that when he went forth to, to worship and to sacrifice, uh, he gave Hannah double for her trouble. Uh, he gave her a double portion of all that he had. Uh, why? Because he loved her, the word says, uh, and because she did not have children. Uh, it was not her health, uh, because the Bible lets us know that she was a young woman, uh, and so we have no indication that she had any type of ailment uh, that would prevent her from giving birth. Uh, no, we must discern then uh, that her barrenness, uh, her brokenness, uh, was a function of God's divine authority. Uh, we must recognize uh, as women some of the things that we are dealing with uh, are a function of God's divine decision making. Uh, Every now and then, uh, there may be some periods of time uh, where we are less than productive. Uh, we are barren because simply God uh, has closed our womb. Uh, 
He has closed it uh, for his own purposes. Uh, he has closed it uh, so that his power may be made manifest. Uh, if we are to look at the church today uh, and we recognize in the church, uh, where are the babies? Uh, I go from place to place and every now and then I wonder where are the babies? Uh, where are the children in the church? Uh, where is the next generation in the church? Uh, as women of God, uh, we ought to be burdened when we don't see an intergenerational uh, congregation. Uh, we've got to be burdened when we don't hear babies crying, uh, toddlers running around out of the seat when they're supposed to be sitting down. Uh, we need to be burdened uh, when we don't see those who are coming in uh, and we know they didn't grow up in the church. Uh, we need to be burdened for the people of God uh, and burdened for those that God is trying to reach. Uh, so why would God cause uh, any of us to be barren? Uh, why would God shut our wounds uh, for a period of time? Uh, I submit to you, beloveds, uh, that every now and then, uh, God does this so that we might recognize who we are uh, and what it is we might need to change. Uh, at this point, I can only speculate, uh, but I'm going to share with you some conditions uh, where babies don't thrive well. Uh, it may be uh, that the Lord has closed the womb uh, of the church uh, because babies don't like dead environments. Uh, babies like excitement, uh, enthusiasm. Uh, babies uh, need to experience uh, the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, God cannot allow and does not allow uh, fruitfulness in dead places. Uh, dead places uh, cannot give forth uh, the nutrients uh, that a baby is going to need in order to grow uh, and to thrive. Uh, I'm going to speculate uh, that babies uh, cannot thrive in an environment where they'll be led astray. Uh, in other words, uh, babies can't thrive in places uh, where they find everybody doing who, which, whatever they want to do. Uh, they need to be in places uh, where what's being taught uh, aligns with what they see people doing. Uh, they need to be in places uh, where a double standard is not the order of the day, uh, but it is the day where things are being subjected uh, to the righteousness of God. Uh, why else uh, might God uh, cry out and say, uh, I'm going to destroy a barrenness uh, because also uh, we can't have babies in places uh, where the spirit of God uh, is being grieved where the spirit of God is being tainted, uh, where we have an outward sense of holiness, uh, but an inward sense uh, where our hearts are unclean before God uh, Almighty. Uh, God is trying to get our attention uh, because the other thing uh, that God decries uh, is bringing babies into places uh, where people don't want them to be. Uh, we must understand uh, that God is lying through the word of God uh, us to see uh, that this also represents the church. Uh, churches have been barren uh, for long, too long, uh, because the reality is uh, those who are babes in Christ, uh, we are keeping them at bay. Uh, we don't have our arms wide open uh, saying, come as you are. Uh, we've forgotten uh, what God saved us from. Uh, we've forgotten uh, how God delivered us uh, from lying tongues, uh, from sexual immorality, uh, from high-mindedness. Uh, and so we've got the posture uh, where we want everybody else uh, to get right uh, before they come through these doors. Uh, but the last I checked, uh, God said uh, it was the house of God uh, that was the house of prayer, uh, the house of deliverance. Uh, so God is reminding us uh, through Hannah today uh, that we may be suffering uh, from barrenness uh, because we've lost sight uh, of our purpose uh, and our responsibility. Uh, the Bible also tells us uh, that Hannah was burdened. You see, in Hannah's situation, she was also being 
burdened by other people in the environment. Uh, so every now and then, uh, when you're going through your stuff, uh, do you know that people will pick at you? Uh, they will attempt uh, to actually make your condition worse. Uh, and when they see you down, uh, they will try to put their foot uh, on your neck uh, and try to twist their heel uh, into the midst of it. Uh, this was what uh, Hannah was going through. Uh, you see, uh, the Bible lets us know uh, that Hannah uh, was already in trouble uh, because in her day, uh, to be barren uh, was almost to be considered uh, worthless in the eyes of womanhood. Uh, and she was being mocked uh, because there was another wife uh, in the household uh, somebody say thank god uh, that was then uh, and this is now because uh, homie don't play that right there uh, but anyhow uh, the bible says uh, there was a season uh, where this was common uh, and there she was uh, in the house uh, could not bear a child uh, and living uh, in the same house uh, with another woman uh, with the same rights she had. Uh, but that woman uh, had children uh, on the right uh, and on the left. Uh, she was burdened uh, because of her inability uh, to be productive uh, for the kingdom. Uh, and not only uh, was she burdened because of that, uh, but the Bible says uh, Penina uh, was not satisfied uh, by just having children. Uh, she wasn't satisfied uh, with just having the upper hand. Uh, no, she wanted to make sure uh, that she felt, uh, that Hannah felt uh, less than human, uh, less than worthwhile, uh, less than worthy. Uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, the Bible says, as, uh, Penina uh, would pick at Hannah, uh, would mock Hannah. Uh, she would do everything she could uh, to make Hannah feel bad. Uh, but I want you to know uh, that Hannah uh, really uh, loved the Lord uh, because unlike uh, some of us, uh, Hannah didn't try uh, to go upside uh, Penina's head. Uh, Hannah still uh, wasn't even concerned uh, about Penina. Uh, how do we know? Uh, because the Bible says uh, Hannah kept her mind uh, focused on her goal. Uh, her goal uh, was a baby. Uh, her goal uh, was to be productive uh, for the kingdom. Uh, beloved, I'm here to tell you today, uh, Every now and then, uh, the enemy uh, is going to try to get you uh, off track, uh, try to get you focused uh, on the folks uh, in your environment uh, that are trying to get on your nerve, uh, the people uh, in your environment uh, that are trying to tear you down. Uh, but I'm here to tell you today, uh, lift your eyes uh, to the hills uh, from which cometh uh, your help. Uh, I'm here to tell you today, uh, you've got to think uh, on those things that are lovely, uh, those things that are pure, uh, those things that are admirable. Uh, you've got to focus uh, on those things that are heavenward uh, rather than the mess uh, going on in your environment. Uh, you've got to still uh, carry a burden uh, for the babies, uh, carry a burden uh, for the loss. Uh, don't worry uh, about the Peninas uh, in your environment. Uh, don't worry uh, about those that are trying uh, to pull you down. Uh, the Bible says uh, when Hannah prayed, uh, she didn't ask God uh, to deal with Penina. Uh, she didn't ask God uh, to throw no stumbling block uh, in Penina's path. Uh, but she kept asking God, uh, give me uh, a baby. Uh, Lord, uh, bless my womb. Uh, Lord, uh, allow me uh, to bring forth something uh, for your honor uh, and for your glory. Uh, brothers and particularly my sisters, uh, stay before the Lord. Uh, when you are burning down, uh, keep your focus uh, on God Almighty. Uh, 
Don't turn to the right uh, or turn to the left, uh, regardless of what uh, you're going through. Uh, be steadfast, uh, unmovable, uh, always abounding uh, in God's work, uh, knowing that someday, uh, someday, uh, your labor uh, shall not uh, be in vain. Uh, the Bible also tells us uh, that not only uh, was Hannah uh, in a position of being barren, uh, not only uh, was she burdened, uh, but Hannah uh, was broken. Uh, yes, uh, the word tells us uh, that she was in bitterness uh, of spirit. Uh, in other words, uh, this condition uh, caused, us, uh, caused her uh, to be bitter uh, from the inside out. Uh, she was dealing with uh, a broken heart. Uh, I don't want you to think uh, this term of bitterness uh, means sour. Uh, this interpretation uh, in the Hebrew uh, means uh, that she was broken before the Lord. Uh, in other words, uh, she was humbling herself. Uh, saying, God, uh, for yet your will, uh, yet your plan, uh, come forth with power uh, and authority. Uh, sisters of God, uh, Baptist, Church of God, uh, Holiness, uh, Methodist, uh, we've got to be broken uh, for the Lord, uh, humble on ourselves. Uh, God, uh, not my will, uh, but thy will. Uh, be done. Uh, we've got to lay down uh, the best of plans. Uh, you know, women, uh, we planners. Uh, we got all our stuff uh, outlined. Uh, got a timeline. Uh, but God is here to tell me and uh, tell me to tell you today. Uh, I am waiting uh, to be able uh, to do things in your life, uh, but I need uh, for you to get off your agenda uh, and get on mine. Uh, I need uh, for you to be broken uh, before the Lord uh, so that you can say, uh, Lord, uh, make me over. Uh, Lord, uh, put me together again uh, because we recognize uh, what God puts together uh, will be better uh, than anything uh, we could have imagined. Uh, we recognize uh, that God is trying uh, to do exceedingly uh, abundantly more uh, than we can ask uh, or think. Uh, you see, Hannah, uh, in her prayers, uh, she wasn't complaining to God. Uh, but she was crying out to God, God, have mercy on me. God, I need you to intervene in my situation. God, it's not within my power because far as I know, all is well with my body. My husband is obviously all right. So God, you're the only one that can turn it around. Women of God, uh, quit uh, calling your girlfriend, uh, trying to figure out uh, what to do. Uh, quit uh, reading those tarot cards. Uh, quit uh, worrying about your horoscope. Uh, quit uh, worrying about your age. Uh, you better try God. Uh, tell him uh, all about it. Uh, he's the one uh, that's in control. Uh, he's the one uh, that has created you uh, in his image. Uh, tell somebody uh, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made uh, and that my soul uh, knoweth right well. Uh, so when God uh, gets ready uh, for me to come forth uh, and to bring forth uh, the fruit of the womb, uh, he and he alone uh, will do it. Uh, he and he alone uh, is in charge. Uh, so the Bible lets us know, uh, Hannah, uh, yes, uh, she was uh, barren. Uh, she was burdened, uh, and she uh, was broken. Uh, she wanted to have a child. Uh, she was willing uh, to give that child uh, unto the Lord. Uh, she recognized uh, that she uh, had the need uh, to be on God's plan. Uh, she could not uh, just have this child uh, 
for herself. Uh, you see, uh, similar to our example uh, of John Knox, uh, we women of God uh, must be concerned uh, about more uh, than just ourselves. Uh, we uh, must be concerned uh, about more uh, than just our family. Uh, we women of God uh, must be concerned uh, about more uh, than the people uh, that come in our church doors. Uh, we women of God uh, must carry uh, the burden of a community. Uh, we must carry uh, the burdens of the people, uh, those who are perishing, uh, those who are hungry, uh, those who are naked, uh, those who are selling their body, uh, those who are selling drugs, uh, those who are stealing, uh, we must carry uh, a burden uh, for the people of God uh, to be saved. Uh, we cannot be content uh, with those that make it to the door, uh, but instead uh, we've got to be weary uh, about those that are sleeping on the street. Uh, we've got to be weary uh, about those walking up and down OBT. Uh, we've got to be weary uh, about those dropping out of school. Uh, we've got to have uh, that bitterness, uh, brokenness of spirit uh, that says, Lord, uh, use us uh, for your kingdom glory. Uh, Lord, uh, may your purposes uh, be made manifest uh, in each one of us. Uh, the Bible says uh, it was Paul uh, who spoke to Timothy, uh, said, Timothy, uh, stir up uh, the gifts uh, that are within you. Uh, we're talking about Christian women uh, praying uh, and, and praising uh, on purpose. Uh, well, our purpose uh, is to fulfill the very gifts uh, that God has bestowed upon us. Uh, our purpose uh, is to go forth uh, and to do uh, what God has preordained uh, for us to do. Uh, that's what the word says. Uh, we were created uh, in his image uh, to go forth uh, and do good works uh, unto the kingdom. Uh, my beloved sisters, uh, this must be uh, our heart's desire. Uh, this must be uh, our burden. Uh, because the Bible lets us know uh, that Hannah uh, got to a point uh, where she began uh, to worship. Uh, you may miss it uh, if you read the scripture too quickly. Uh, right after uh, she prayed uh, unto the Lord, uh, the Bible says uh, she told God, uh, I'm ready uh, to make a covenant uh, before you. Uh, she told God, uh, Lord, if you give me that child, I will give him back unto you. You see, that's worship. You may have missed it. Worship is God. I want to be used for your glory. And whatever you bless me with, I'm going to put it back in your hands so that you, God, uh, will be able to do uh, whatever you need to do. Uh, if we're going to learn uh, how to worship God, uh, I'm here to tell you today, uh, it's more than uh, showing up uh, for church. Uh, glory to God. Uh, our worship uh, is in our everyday uh, obedience. Uh, every day uh, that we get up uh, and live for the Lord, uh, every day uh, that we follow uh, God's precepts, uh, that's your worship. Uh, so you got to ask somebody, uh, not on Sunday uh, did you go to worship, uh, but tomorrow uh, when you get home uh, at 5 o'clock, uh, say, did you worship the Lord today? Uh, on Wednesday, uh, before you go to the office, uh, Ask somebody, uh, did you worship the Lord today? Uh, your life uh, is a living sacrifice, uh, and God commands us uh, to present ourselves uh, holy uh, and acceptable uh, unto him. Uh, he says this is uh, our reasonable, uh, not a stretch below us. Uh, it's not anything heavy to do, uh, but it's the reasonable thing uh, for us to do. Uh, as I head to my seat, uh, the reality is uh, after Hannah's, uh, Hannah's barrenness, uh, 
and her burden and her brokenness. Uh, the word tells us uh, she was blessed. <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see, uh, that right there uh, is a reason uh, to shout uh, because too many of us uh, think uh, that because we're in a difficult uh, or problematic situation, uh, somehow uh, God is not blessing us. Uh, but I declare today, uh, if you have life uh, in your body uh, and you can Woo, breathe. Ha, guess what? Ha, you're blessed ha, of the Lord ha, and still ha, highly favored. Ha, the word tells me ha, that after Hannah prayed, ha, she went home. Ha, her husband made love to her. Ha, the Bible says, ha, God what? Ha, remembered her. Ha, yeah. Ha, you see, ha, this was not uh, the first time uh, that Hannah uh, had prayed. Uh, Hannah had prayed uh, multiple times. Uh, how do we know? Uh, because the Bible says uh, every year uh, and every time in the year uh, that they went up uh, to sacrifice uh, and worship. Uh, Hannah uh, was making her petition uh, unto uh, the Lord. Uh, but uh, I'm here to tell you, uh, you got to learn uh, after your perpetual prayers uh, how to worship God. Uh, you've got to learn uh, how to be in a position uh, where you can say, uh, God, uh, when you get ready, uh, however you do it, uh, and when you do it, uh, I will uh, give you uh, all the glory, uh, all the honor, uh, and all the praise. Uh, you've got to be ready uh, to say, God, uh, I know uh, this thing uh, is not really uh, about me anyway. Uh, God, uh, it's all about you. Uh, Christian women, uh, our journey uh, is so that we uh, might bring glory uh, and honor uh, to God Almighty. Uh, our journey uh, is so that through uh, our womb, uh, both our physical womb uh, and our spiritual womb, uh, the kingdom of God uh, shall advance uh, here in the earth. Uh, Christian women, uh, we are blessed uh, as we move uh, from barrenness uh, to, bro to being burdened, uh, to being broken. Uh, how do we know? Uh, because the Bible says uh, that God answered uh, Hannah's prayer, uh, that the day came uh, when Hannah conceived. Uh, the Bible says uh, Hannah gave birth uh, to Samuel uh, and gave Samuel uh, back uh, unto the Lord. Uh, and there she honored uh, God forevermore. Uh, so beloved, uh, let me just say to you, uh, do not be discouraged, uh, but that your womb is barren. Uh, just know uh, this is an opportunity uh, for God to do uh, some miraculous things uh, through the kingdom of God. Uh, every woman uh, needs to just put their hand uh, on their womb. Uh, we're not talking about uh, any physical babies, uh, but we're talking about uh, God trying to give birth uh, to some gifts uh, in the spirit. Uh, God trying to give birth uh, to some ministries. Uh, God trying to give birth uh, to some talents. Uh, God trying to give birth uh, to some new careers. Uh, God is trying to give birth uh, in the midst of this season. Uh, but you've got to learn uh, how to stay on your face uh, before the Lord. Uh, you've got to learn uh, how to carry your burdens uh, in the heat of the day. Uh, but recognize uh, that God says uh, his burdens are easy. Why? Uh, because his yoke is light uh, and his burden are easy. Uh, you've got to recognize uh, that God says uh, he will uh, 
be your burden bearer. He'll be with you through the difficult seasons. You've got to learn how to worship God before you get what you think you want. You've got to learn how to trust God's outcome as being better than what you think you need. You've got to understand that God says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. You've got to learn to trust God for the outcome. Trust God for all that he has planned for your life. What I like about it is he gave us an example in Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ. The word tells us uh, that an angel uh, came and told her uh, that she uh, was going to give birth uh, to the Savior of the world. Uh, and she was to call him uh, by the name uh, of Jesus. Uh, she knew uh, she was a virgin, uh, had never uh, been with a man, uh, but yet uh, after some consternation, uh, after some deliberation, uh, she simply said, uh, be it unto me, O oh God, uh, be it unto me uh, in accordance uh, with your word. Uh, so I don't know, uh, maybe I got one uh, or two people uh, in this place uh, where you recognize uh, God is trying to pull you through uh, a season of barrenness uh, to a season of blessing. Uh, God is trying to pull you through uh, to a new level uh, of spiritual productivity. Uh, I'm just here to tell you today, uh, God is saying, uh, will you trust me? Uh, will you trust me? Uh, will you give me uh, full control? Uh, Will you surrender uh, unto me uh, and say, Lord, uh, have your way. Uh, Lord, uh, have your way. Uh, God, uh, do what you will. Uh, I'm giving you uh, my mind, uh, giving you uh, my heart, uh, giving you uh, my body, uh, my career. Uh, I'm giving you uh, everything, uh, Lord. Have your way. Move me from the places of barrenness and brokenness to the places of blessing. Women of God, the word is still true. It said, if my people, my people, God ain't talking to the foreigners in the land. He ain't talking to the unsaved in the land. He's talking to us. He said, to my people, call by my name. Will humble themselves and pray. Seek my face. There go your worship. But hello, somebody say turn from that wickedness. <laughs> you got to, we got to turn, people. We got to turn. So then will I hear from heaven and I will heal the land. I will bring back the productivity that was always intended when as women of God, people of God, we do just this. We take a stand and pray and worship and persist for the very purposes to which we were born. The very kingdom work that God has called us to. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. Seek ye first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else shall be added.
saying to us, if you're broken, if you're barren, if there's issues of bitter, sad, and brokenness in the heart, say, Lord, if you're blessing in the season, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing in the season, don't do it without me. Lord, if salvation is given in the season, don't do it without me. Hallelujah. Tell him to make me over again. Fill my heart. Fill my spirit. Fill my mind. Do it for me, Lord. As we stand all over the church today, we're going to sing this familiar song, I will trust in the Lord until I die. is open. This invitation is extended to those who do not know him in the pardon of your spirit. If you're here, we bid you to come. Will there be one? Now the second appeal is for those who want to have a closer connection with the spirit if you're here and you want a renewedness we bid you to come if there be one that want to say to the Lord take my life Lord and let it be Be seated, we have done as the Lord has commanded, and still there is room. Did not our hearts burn within by the woman of God spoke to us by the way. Thank you, Reverend Dr. Felicia Williams, for that word, one that can penetrate and carry us on to the next week and the days beyond. We thank God for you and what you have shared with us today. I shall not come before you again, but I thank God for this opportunity and for Sister Lu uh, for Reverend Lugenia Paula Sanchez for inviting me to come to do this. And hopefully I have done what I was supposed to do, which is keep the program running. <laughs> okay, keep the program moving. So I hope I have done that. So at this time, we will have our offertory appeal by Reverend Lugenia Paula Sanchez. And I'm not going to say this is the part that everybody can participate in because I hope that everyone has already participated in this whole worship experience today. God bless you. Let the church say amen. Let the church say praise the Lord. What a word, what a word. How many of you were blessed by that word? 
Hallelujah. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Will, for the word, for the word, for the word. I come now for the offertory appeal. God is so good. God is good. The women's ministry and I, during the time of Hurricane Harvey, we said that we wanted to do something. And the something is this, that we wanted to gather baby supplies and send them to San Antonio, Texas. Why San Antonio, Texas? Because our two larger churches in Houston were flooded. So Emmanuel and Bethel Church there. And I'm making an appeal to you. I'm asking that you would please put $25 in this offering to help us. We are asking for $25. The Bible teaches us that we should give, not of necessity, for God loveth what? A cheerful giver. So I'm asking you, beloved, to please join me and cheerfully give Cheerfully give. We are asking for 25. But search yourself and ask God, what shall I? What shall I give? And God will. He'll do it for you. So we're going to ask Brother Bobby to give us some marching music. And we are going to ask Sisters Maria Dempsey, Maxine Hickson, Sister Gloria Green, and Sister Vivian, Vivian Nicoletti, where they come and assist us. And since I am appealing, here's my 25. And I also have some sin gold money of about $240. Amen for the sin gold. It's good to have friends it's good to have good acquaintances because in this life, we need some good friends. We need some good acquaintances. So as the ushers direct, will you please come? If you're writing checks, please make your checks payable to Mount Olive AME Church. Your memo, offering for women's ministry.
And if you want to give electronically, I understand that you can do that in the northeast. Just a minute, please. I have $230 worth of sin go money. Let the church say amen. Follow Sister Tierra. Thank you so very much. Do you not know that there's no ship like fellowship? No ship like fellowship. Shiloh Baptist Church. Kojic from Wenham Park, Church of God in Christ. The young lady that sang the solo, that's the first lady of Flowers Temple, Church of God in Christ, a mighty woman in the Lord. Shiloh then, what can we not say about her chapel, its pastor, and its membership? What can we not say? Hallelujah, somebody. Glory to God. Glory to God. And then our next door neighbor, Carter Tabernacle. Amen. And then from St. John the Episcopalian Church. Amen. Sister Felicia, you know, women, hear me now, women, we in Orlando, we could really do something great for the Lord if we would just do what? Band together are bond together as one. Can we not? We can really do. Think about it. Think about it. And then our neighbor over there on Bruton Boulevard, St. Mark AME Church. And as Sister Harriet Brown Burt comes to give us the observation, it's just been a wonderful time in the Lord. And she would tell us how we did. Amen.
observations. Observe means to look and see. It means to review and comment. Well, I see a beautiful array of Christian men and women who came to worship God. And if you didn't feel something today, tomorrow morning make an appointment with your doctor. Because something is wrong with you. And Pastor Williams, you must have been in my house last night. I was sitting over there just scratching off things because almost everything I wanted to observe, she already said. But let's think about what we did today. The songs, with my hands lifted up, I will bless you, O Lord. And then the spiritual movement came to talk about, touch me, Lord Jesus. And all that solo, in times like these. And if we ever needed to grip the solid rock, it is now. Then Jesus, 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 what a wonder you are. And if you don't know he's a wonder, you just keep living. If he hasn't shown up in your life yet, just keep living. Then the Hearst Chapel Choir also told us in times of trouble, I am covered by the blood. Do you know that we're all covered by the blood? You better be covered by the blood. Well, in my mind, the speaker. Now, you know you cannot come behind that. First Samuel, first verse through the 24th verse, she poured out her heart to us from barrenness to brokenness to blessing. Is that anybody's testimony this afternoon? It sure is mine because God brought me from a mighty, mighty long way. She had so many nuggets in there. God has closed the womb of our productivity. Now that's a personal situation. You gotta stop and think, what have I been doing for God? And she also said everything is a result of God's divine authority. Have you been working on God's authority? Are on your authority because if it's on your authority that's the wrong one I remember our former bishop Bishop McKinley Young preached a sermon called the seven sounds in the service one of the sounds was clickly money and you know what another one of the sounds was a baby crying because he said if you're in a church and no baby's crying you got a problem and our speaker told us how we have to make sure that we are intergenerational and that we are preparing for the next generation at all times. And women, you know there's one thing we need to do, and that is focus and unify. You know, some of us try to do everything. We can't do everything. We just need to focus unify and get together. Hannah made a promise to God. She didn't just beg him. She made a promise. And sometimes, all the time, we got to go back and think, we got to promise God something and let him help us fulfill the prop promise. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Williams, for that. Now, ladies, we all know the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. Amen? Sorry, men, but the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world. So women, what we've got to do, as the speaker said, is push, push, push. Push out that gift that you've been sitting on and let God use you. I just want to say for a moment about this wonderful color purple all these different shades of purple if you look around you see all different shades purple is a color of royalty of majesty of wealth of piety and especially in the AME church we know who gets to wear the purple robe the bishops the head of our church and here we are today royal women in purple 
celebrating and working with God in prayer, praise, and purpose. And I say in prayer, stay on your knees, because if there was ever a time to pray with the world the way it is now, this is the time. We need to praise and thank him for his goodness. I think that just this past week, two wonderful events of the Lord. Thank you, University of Florida, for shouting down Richard Spencer, letting him know you may have done something in Charlottesville, Virginia, but you can't come to Florida and do it. Thank you. And look at women, what happened this week with our representative, Frederica Wilson. We need to pray because we have somebody in the other house that has no respect for women. And today we need to make sure we band together, we focus, and we unify. And one real purpose, if you don't have a purpose, I can give you one, to remove racial tension in this country. Now we know we're all not going to Washington, but you can certainly do it right where you are. In your home, in your community, whatever you see, speak up and speak out. Make yourself a committee of one. So I say to you today, let us be real Christian women, standing for God through prayer, through praise, and through purpose. Go forth with your royal self. Sister Harriet did her job. Sister Louvenia, may you know, we have a special presentation at this time, and with the assistance of Sister Louvenia May and Sister Vivian Nicoletti, you all just bear with us, because we in women's ministry, we just need to do something right now. And if you're not in the back, if you're seated in the, commun in the uh, congregation, if you are a member of women's ministry, will you please stand up? And if you can't stand, will you just please raise your hand? Come on, women. I see some of y'all who can stand and you're sitting down. Okay. Sister Nicoletti, it's on you now. Amen. They say as they're coming, we want you to know that we are still praying for you and we are hanging in here with you. Thank you so much, ladies. Thank you so much. that a hand. Thank you so very much. It has been a blessed evening. Thank you so very much for coming back. Thank you so very much for coming back. And I did miss somebody in the back from St. John Missionary Baptist Church over here. 
we have Sister Carolyn Frederick. Just raise your hand, Sister Frederick, or stand up. Amen. So glad to have you. And now, as always, I always like to say thank you. We did a lot of preparation for this service. And to God be the glory. He allowed us to be blessed one more time today. So you know what? Just put your hands, fold your hands, and tell the Lord thank you. Thank you, Lord. Look what he did for us this evening. Didn't he bless you in a mighty way? Thank you, Jesus. And oh, did not our hearts burn within? As the woman of God said a word for the Lord. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. And may heaven smile on you. Now, I always like to tell people thank you. Because when we called, you didn't have to answer. You did not have to say yes. You could have been home just, as young folks say, chilling. Or watching the football game. I love football too, but I knew this was something special. And I just want to thank Women's Ministry for putting this together. We got you that far. For putting this together, and as I told them, it's not my thing, it's our thing. Be inclusive in leadership, be inclusive. No one person knows it all. And a dear friend of mine says, and we tell each other, and she often reminds me, my daddy said, God didn't put all the sense of Father in the ministry. God didn't put all the sense in one person's head. Am I right about it, friend? Amen. So now we come to say thank you. Certificate of Appreciation, African Methodist Episcopal Church, awarded to Deidre Postel in appreciation of royal women in purpose ecumenical service, Mount Olive AME Church, Orlando, Florida, dated this 22nd day of October in the year of our Lord, 2017, presented by Women's Ministry, Reverend Dr. Mark E. Fletcher, Pastor. Deidre's mother is receiving this for her, and all of the certificates say the same thing, except the name change. Sister Beverly, wonderful presider. Janice Carter, my mother, Sister Felicia Boyd, and Sister Pinky Sanders, Sister Twyla from Koji Bazaar, and Reverend Bertha Taylor Johnson, Sister Harriet Brown Burke, Church Chapel AME Church Praise. Our preacher, our preacher, that's more appropriate. Will you please come forward? We know that the word of God does not have a price on it. You can't put a price on the word of God. Not only do we want to present this certificate to you, but we also want you to have this honorarium for doing such a fantastic job this evening. To God be the glory, and keep on preaching, girl. Amen, amen. And want to thank Mount Olive's choir and usher. You didn't have to come back, but we want to say thank you anyhow. Thank you anyhow. Our pastor, not here. It's not here. And guess what, y'all? I'm getting crunchy now. 
he just became a granddaddy. Gave, give that a hand. Daughter, Anna, Mama Anna now, and, and Papa and Daddy Scott. Recent, just recently gave birth to a son, and you know how those, the first grandchild, and you know how those grandparents are. Amen. We pray that all is well and that all will continue to be well. We are so glad that you've come. And we do have some light refreshment in the back for you. And I'm sure if Reverend Crutcher were here, he would tell you how happy he was that you came and that he would invite you to come back again. And so we are saying as a church family on Mount Olive, glad you came, come back again. And with that being said, we will, I hope I didn't miss anybody, but just glad to have all of you. And I'll preside everybody. And with that being said, we call on our preacher of the hour to come and give us the benediction. Amen. Amen. We thank God for all that he has done in this place. Hold it against y'all that y'all got a pink microphone up here. <laughs> That's on behalf of all the sorrows in the house. God bless you. I love you. Just a little humor. Amen. We love pink too. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you. Thank you for tabernacling with us, oh God, and for ministering to our hearts and spirit. We never want to leave your place the same way we came. So we thank you, O oh God, for being a balm in Gilead where we were wounded and weary. We thank you for touching our weary souls. We thank you for strengthening and encouraging us. God, we are not ungrateful, but we give you thanks and we give you praise for every visitation of your Holy Spirit. God, our hearts are glad. God, we thank you for the food that has been prepared. We pray, O oh God, that not only will we enjoy it, O oh God, that it will nurture our bodies and that we will be ever mindful that our bodies are the temples of your Holy Spirit. Therefore, let us present them to you as sacrifices. Let us present them to you as elements of worship each and every moment of our lives. Now unto him who is able to keep you and to present you faultless before the only wise God, our Father, with exceeding great joy. To him be dominion, majesty, glory, and honor through Jesus Christ our Lord, both now and forevermore. And the people of God sang, 